Welcome back to another True Crime Saturday. Tonight, we are exploring a rather curious case. This case here is about a young boy named Joseph Sorelli, which we didn't actually even know his name until late last year. The young boy was about four years old. Um, as, you can, as you guys can see on the new investigative set we've got here, hopefully, hopefully you guys like this, uh, <laughs> um, you can see the board back there. There's a few details, and I want everybody to understand this is how it's going to be on the set. We're going to be having it so everything is available. You'll be able to see it. It just won't be very clear. Um, that's done intentionally because we are going to zoom into areas and things like this where it is... Um, important so if we get any sponsors things like this there's any kind of uh, math things like that uh, we're gonna use a chalkboard um, if we're gonna be going over just what we have on the case so case files things like this it's gonna be up on the investigative board um, if there's any kind of uh, uh, live discussion which tonight I mean we're gonna have a chat with people in the chat as well but we're um, we're not gonna have anybody on the show no guests tonight but if we have guests uh, we'll have it so it's set up on um, little um, animated screens and things like this. So just wanted to go and spruce things up. I'm still sprucing more of this up. Hey, how's it going, Deb? Um, as you guys can also see, the chat is also a lot more interactive. Um, everybody can see what's going on. But like I said, I also wanted to go and showcase some of my new work. Uh, it's the new look of a stranger as well. Thank you, Ilya King, for your uh, contribution. Um, those few years ago, I do appreciate it. Um, but I am retiring the older ones. Um, I've got some new designs for the stranger um, as well. So <clears throat> we're going to be posting those up on here as well. So like I said, just kind of big updates here. But as you can see, there's the case box that will always give you the details about what case we're working on. Um, which will be on the table here if there's any additional information we need to go and put on there because the board is too full you guys will see stacks of paper so just that way everybody can see how these streams are going to go if there's a ton of information like when we do go back over the david crowley case uh here in i think it's in three months four months something like this um you guys will get to see that there's a ton of information but this will also show how much there is on a case that we do actually have but that being said, you guys can also see on the investigative board, there's there's not really a ton of information we're going to be covering, but it's some of it's kind of lengthy to explain. So hopefully you guys like the new set. We're going to go and dig right into the investigative board here in just a second. So <clears throat> whoa, that's the wrong one there. What the heck? OK, let me adjust this. I do apologize for that. That was the wrong set there there we go nope that's wrong one yet again whoopsie daisies That's why, okay, I see what I did wrong here. <laughs> just getting used to the new set and everything, some of the new things I have to go and do just to keep up with it, so. There we go. Whoa, I did not ask for two, come on now. Man, come on. There we go. There we go, so now it should be correct. There we go, perfect. So as you guys can see, so I do apologize for the little technical difficulties there. Um, this is what we have on our victim here, Joseph Augustus Zarelli, a four-year-old kid who was born in 1953. I believe it was in January. Um, but then he died in um, February. February 25th is roughly when they found his body, um, 1957. So the kid, he went through quite the last, uh, the last few days at least 
um, before his death, it looked like it was probably quite terrifying. Now, we don't have all the details about this, and we have two theories. Two theories that actually stand up pretty good. Um, one of which, which you guys can see due to the post-it notes here, um, one of them actually leans right into the second one, which means the second one technically is more credible. Um, and that's where I'm leaning anyways, where my belief is. Um, but I'll get into that in just a second. But the kid was only four years old. Um, he was approximately, I believe it says three foot five or three foot six. Um, and he was weighing 30 pounds. Now, for those parents out there that are hearing this, yes, I know, I, me, myself, I had a tough time reading through this case. Um, I have a young child, or young son myself, and it's hard to think of something like that ever happening to a kid that age. It's just, it's heart-wrenching. It's really difficult to read. Um, for those that are, I'm not going to go and show off any of the, the nitty-gritty details. So this, this one actually, young kids, I mean, you know, younger people could actually listen to this case here. Just, there's not a whole lot I'm going to be covering that's going to be, in fact, there's nothing I'm covering that's actually going to get to the point of where it shouldn't be for young kids, but end of the day this kid was um he was suffering some from some malnutrition and we don't know how long but it doesn't just take one day all of a sudden oh you're just gonna just start losing a ton of weight no 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 this takes a while um but on top of that you know he was like i said he was severely underweight but he was also uh he was killed because of blunt force trauma um, and I believe it was four strikes to the head is what they accounted for with uh, bruising and damage to the skull and things like that. Really, really sad way to go. But the kid was found quite literally naked, covered in a blanket um, inside of a an old J.C. Penney's bassinet uh, box. It was just empty, just had him and the blanket in there. Um but he was severely beaten. Um, obviously, he was. we're not sure if he was coughing up blood or if he was spitting up blood, but there was blood coming out of his mouth and things like this. But he, they basically have narrowed down, and it's more than likely um, anywhere between just maybe two, three days up to about two weeks um, the kid had been out there. It. The really sad part about this is the fact that two people had stumbled upon the box and one of the people had basically seen it and just kind of just dipped out of there one nothing to do with it I uh, thought it was a doll I thought he was a doll in fact and uh, just dipped out now there's a few theories about that person as well but I'm not going to get into that because honestly I don't think it really matters a great deal at this point but the second person um, had allegedly had some traps out there and when he stumbled upon it, he sat on it for about a day. And depending on the sources you're reading, some sources say he went and spoke to a priest. And then he went and a day later went and spoke to the police about it. Um, others basically had said that he had sat on information and then a day later went to the police. But either way, so their individual went to the police. The police went and investigated it. Sure enough, uh, they found a, a small boy in there, four years old. At the point, at that point, they thought he was anywhere between four and six years old. Um, they re they really couldn't give a good estimate due to malnutrition and how bad the beating was. Um, but keep in mind, they did actually narrow it down. That the J.C. Penney's that was uh, the bassinet box was sold out was at the Upper Darby, um, and it was sold for seven dollars and fifty cents. During that point, it had to have been sold between December nineteen fifty. Six, I believe it was, and nineteen and uh, like February, uh, nineteen fifty-seven. So this was just recently done. So we're looking at somebody who went and got a box big enough to stuff the boy in for a coffin. Um, either that, or they had found this box. However, there's only apparently twelve sales of that from that store, and the, the police were actually able to keep in mind this is before credit cards. Uh, were able to track it back all the way down to 11 people out of the 12 that had purchased these boxes. So one of those people very well could have known or 
didn't tear apart their box properly, and what happened is somebody ended up stuffing this kid in there. Because they got a hold of him. Um, so it's pretty good on the police. I mean, I will say this is some of the, the best police work I've seen in a while. Um, Apple Valley, I'm looking at you. You guys really need to step up your game, especially with David Crowley. We all know he didn't do it. It's impossible. But besides the point, this kid, he had a good team of detectives looking into his case. Absolutely phenomenal team. They were able to cover so much. They did the, their proper forensics and things like this. So they had available at the time. Did very, very stand-up police work. So I, like I said, I have nothing but just commendation after commendation for this police force. They did a fantastic job. However, that being said, there were some issues along with a bit of the narrative here. I'm going to get into that in just a second. So, when it comes down to it, there was tips that came through. And a lot of them just it didn't really, you know, it didn't dawn on people. And some of these tips actually later on started connecting with the second theory. And this is why the second theory is absolutely insane. Um, is it's, it's got so much solid ground to stand on. And that's the craziest part of that. But, that being said, they recently did come out and discover that Joseph Zarelli was actually the son of Augustus Zarelli and uh, Mary Funkett. Uh, this, he was born out of wedlock. Um, in fact, Augustus actually was on the birth certificate as his father. But what it's strange is we don't see anything past that. It's the only document that actually shows he existed. Now, that's the sad part here. Now, what happened at that time, at this point in time, there was a lot of young mothers that they'd have a child out of wedlock and then they'd give up their child for um, adoption, whether it be through legal means or otherwise. This is where things get a little odd because Augustus apparently didn't know about his son. Yet he's on the birth certificate. Now, things have changed since then and not much, to be honest, but a lot uh, there, there's some bits and pieces when it comes to the signing birth certificate and things like this. Things have changed a little bit on how that kind of operates. Not a lot, though. But how did he know? Yeah, it's a little weird, and I get it, it does happen, but interesting, to say the very least. Nine months and hadn't seen or heard from her, no, no circles, things like this, you know, it's kind of odd. But, I digress. End of the day, Augustus is, apparently, before he passed on, I mean, even then, he didn't know about it. This is the only son he didn't know about. Now, keep in mind, Joseph does have siblings. Now, every article I've read, it's siblings, not sibling. So he's got multiple brothers and sisters. They'd be half, because apparently, Jos uh, not Joseph, but Augustus Zarelli and um, Mary Funkett never got married. So, that's a th apparently a thing. But now we're going to get a little bit more into the crime scenes. I really just want to cover that so we have clear details of who this kid was right so like i said before the body was discovered in an empty bassinet box like i said it's the jc penny one from the upper derby over in philadelphia and we got it down to how much it cost all this because of the box all the details on the outside which gives us literally a minimal amount of people could have been okay which this makes this really interesting here because now they can nail it down i have my sneaking suspicion theory too is pretty accurate but Zarelli um, had at least three surgical scars, one on the ankle, one on the groin, and then there was an L-shaped scar underneath his chin. And his hair was also cropped recently, um, as there was several chunks, or clumps rather, of hair that were stuck to his body. And as I said earlier, he was severely malnourished. This kid did not have a good end. Now, investigators over time had started looking into the case, and they actually tracked it back. Okay, this is what it looked like at this point. And as you can see here where the post number two is, you can see that I was able to track it down on Google Maps. This is directly where 
this all took place. In fact, there's a memorial marker there as well. So you guys can check it out on Google Maps and see, but this is what it looks like nowadays, or as of like last year, I believe it was early this year. And um, you can see from the early photograph from the 90s compared to what it looks like now. Different seasons too, obviously, because I mean, summer, I believe this is July 20, uh, 2022. And then the older one is, I believe in like the fall or winter. Uh, either way, I was able to track it back. Now, apparently both sides didn't, they're not really commenting on whether they knew about Joseph or not, even though there's a birth certificate, which means at least the mother knew. But that being said, we don't know what happened after that. After she gave birth, signed birth certificate, we don't know how long she kept the child. I'm assuming when if the kid went for adoption, this went up happening. It's kind of the times. Um, child born out of wedlock, that was kind of a thing. However, there was another story that came out in late 90s, early 2000s, about this woman who is named, who was being mentioned as Mary, who made these claims. Now, keep in mind, this woman was also apparently an, out, an, was an outgoing patient for a psychiatrist or whatever she had, and she had confided in the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist, you know, she had told the psychiatrist she wanted the story out there, uh, basically went back and forth, you know, with the psychiatrist being the middleman for a little bit. At that point, uh, Mary had actually met with the investigators, these cold case, these people that had been looking at this case for a long time. In fact, one of them was the medical examiner, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he'd continued to look at this case. There's a few people, um, you know, that had just looked at this case for years and years and years. Well, they met with Mary, and Mary gave her story and claimed that her mother had, in fact, purchased Zarelli, but didn't say by name. In fact, I believe the name she gave to the investigator was Jonathan. But once again, this kid's being adopted. Names are going to change. Okay, that's going to happen every now and then. But the kid apparently didn't really speak. He was also still in a diaper. Um, in fact, when she had seen the child, the child was uh, being held up and he was also in a soiled diaper as well. And then money was handed off and then the kid went into this other lady's custody. Well, Mary's mother had apparently put him in the basement and he was basically being held down there. Which would make sense why the neighbors had never heard or seen of him, any of him at all. But apparently he had really messed up one night and even though, you know, Mary was also undergoing a lot of the same things, malnourished and things like this quite a bit, but Joseph was apparently taken to the bathtub and beaten. And what's being said is that Mary's mother had killed him and it wasn't intentional, but then had basically gotten things together and gotten her in the middle of the night or whatever and taken Joseph's body who is now in the trunk in a box allegedly taking him out to um, I don't remember what it's called again Fox something Fox Grove or something like this but basically taken I've got I've got it up on the map right there but I'd taken him all the way out there to dump the body now even Mary accounts for the driver, which she would have no knowledge of, mind you, on this one. She'd have no knowledge of this. But an unsuspecting driver had driven by and had taken no and even asked to help, and the mother said no, declined the help, and the guy just drove off. Now, the guy who made that claim said it was a mother and son, and that she had just waved him off, said, nah, we're good, kind of thing, right? Well, here's the funny thing. They both line up. Now, if she's malnourished in the dark, could be mistaken as a boy. It's understandable. Okay? The man which she was dressed in and things like this, maybe she was still in the car. End of the day, though, the story, it's got a lot of uh, clout here. A lot of it follows up really, really easily with what we have from witness testimonies, tips, things like this. It all lines up. And that's the really, really peculiar part. But Mary's been saying for years that her mother did it. 
Now people are just saying, well, she's a psych, you know, she's a psychi uh, psychiatric patient or whatever, an, out an outgoing patient or whatever, that, you know, we can't really take her word for it. Well, here's the thing. Nobody's been disclosed on what she's seeking psychiatric help for. Just because somebody needs psychiatric help, I'd still say that their, their testimony could still be valid. What are they seeking such psychiatric help for? Bipolar disorder? Schizophrenia? What, what is it, right? I mean, these things can matter. By the end of the day, she had made this claim. Apparently, the police aren't really believing her, yet these other investigators do. So. I don't know. What do you guys think? So what's interesting about this is the fact that if you look right here on the board, it does say 33 to 39 minutes. It depends on the route, and that's if you are following the speed limit with no traffic. Okay, I just put this together very quickly just with directions. I didn't account for the time of night. I just literally put in the directions. I want to see how long would it take roughly, right? At late, that late at night, especially that time of the, you know, you know, that era, if you will, there wouldn't have been as many cars. On top of that, there was a lot of rural areas. So there would not have been a whole lot of traffic going on that way. Or back. So thinking about it that way, that makes things even more interesting because that means less traffic, which means less chances police are going to stop you because rural roads. These these drivers could just go, they could drive faster. So could it be more like 20 minutes? Possibly. Middle of the night too. So I'm saying this, this is where this gets a little peculiar. But, for right now, we know his name. And the story right here seems to stick. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, I will be back next Saturday with our next case. Uh, just, you know, pay attention to the Instagram, Facebook page, things like that. That's where you guys are going to get the information on the next case. Um, but that is, that is it for tonight. Uh, like I said, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. And for those that are interested in getting your guys' uh, news fix, tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Real News Now, A Strange Investigation.